business organizations, corporate offices, the appointment, authority, and responsibilities of corporate management. In a corporation, there exists a chain of agency relationships. The shareholders appoint the board of directors as agents to direct the corporation. As the board usually meets only on a quarterly basis, the board of directors appoints officers as agents to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the corporation. The officers appoint employees as agents of the company to carry out certain roles and tasks. Employees recruit contractors and outside agencies to perform certain functions. The chain of agency relationships is subject to agency law as laid out in our agency slideshow. Officer titles and responsibilities are defined in the corporation's bylaws. Common officer positions for corporations are President, Chief Financial Officer or CFO, Chief Executive Officer or CEO. However, there's no mandate that every US corporation must have a CEO. The President is the top position in many companies. Officer positions can be created to reflect the industry and the business. A corporation in the high-tech sector may create an officer role of Chief Technology Officer, but this role may not exist in a consumer products company where the role of Chief Marketing Officer may be better suited. A CEO or another officer often speaks on behalf of the corporation. How is the authority to bind the corporation to agreements vested in these offices? Turning to the fundamentals of agency, we see there are three methods. Express, implied and apparent authority. When the powers are delegated to the officer in a written resolution of the board of directors, this is known as express authority. The authority is explicitly provided to the officer usually in writing, but a writing is not necessary, an express authority can be provided verbally. Authority does not have to be express in order to bind the corporation. An individual carrying the title President of the corporation is traditionally held to possess certain powers to bind the corporation to a wide range of operational undertakings. Even if the President has not been provided with express authority, he's still able to bind the corporation as certain authority is implied through his title. Other titles such as Chief Technology Officer may not carry the same broad scope of powers as President, but the CTO title can imply the power to enter technology licensing agreements and other technology-oriented agreements on behalf of the corporation. An individual lacking express authority or authority implied through her title can still bind the corporation to agreements if she and the corporation led the contracting party to believe that she carried such authority and the belief was reasonable under the circumstances. So if the CEO of the corporation introduces a manager of the company to a seller of real estate and tells the manager that the manager tells the seller that the manager would be taking care of the purchase of a new office building, a contract signed by the manager on behalf of the company would be binding on the grounds that under the circumstances the seller had a reasonable belief this manager had power to acquire real estate on behalf of the company. Even if the manager lacked express authority and lacked the title to customarily imply such authority, the manager is still able to bind the company to agreements through apparent authority if the contracting party's belief in the manager's authority was reasonable.